Following the release of the latest action flick, The Gray Man, we noticed quite a few parallels between the Netflix production and the Avenger movies, both directed by the Russo brothers. But it wasn't until watching the movie that we realized Ryan Gosling has never done an action film. And in this video, we're going to discuss Ryan Gosling's potential as an action movie star. So sit back and buckle up. Firstly, Gosling's always wanted to do this. He's already appeared in action movies like Drive, the buddy cop comedy, the nice guys from the 1970s and the sci-fi blockbuster Blade Runner 2049, but his new movie is the real deal since he portrays a skilled assassin for the American government. While promoting the movie, the Oscar-nominated actor admitted that he always wanted to make an action film as the lead, mainly because they made him fall in love with movies in the first place. It just took him a long time to find the right one. Oh, come on, Ryan. It's an action movie, not the love of your life. He added that The Gray Man is just like the films he grew up loving. It has the 80s and 90s action film vibe. The characters are humorous, and he really liked his character. The film started streaming on Netflix on July 22nd and is another generic, algorithm driven action movie. Yet another example of how the studio makes films that kind of feel like real films. Just like if you asked an AI computer to write an action movie. The Gray Man is always on the go, leaping between countries and putting himself in dangerous positions. Gosling fights men in trains and fights them while falling from a cargo jet that is exploding. He dashes across busy cities while punching, shooting, and occasionally being struck by moving cars. He is repeatedly stabbed, nearly drowns, and is forced to build a bomb in the MacGyver fashion. And through all of this, he keeps a what, me worry? Attitude. Sierra 6 is in constant danger, but he never loses his cool. Wow, he's literally me. Up next, Gosling's progression as an action star. Every decade, there have been generational action movie actors, from Paul Newman and Sean Connery of the 1950s and 19 1960s through Arnold Schwarzenegger, Bruce Lee, and Sylvester Stallone of the 1970s and 1980s, to Tom Cruise, Daniel Craig, and Mark Wahlberg of the modern day. Every star has its moment in the sun before turning into a black dwarf and making way for the nebulas of the future. And with actors like Tom Holland, Daniel Kaluuya, and Ryan Gosling, who went for the stars and touched down on the moon in Damien Chazelle's Oscar-nominated First Man, we have already seen a peak of the action stars of the future, who had the capacity to soar to extraterrestrial heights. The Canadian actor's acting career has just recently begun in the last decade, despite the fact that he is a well-known figure in Hollywood and has earned a reputation as an A-lister. Most of his early work is a blend of dramas, romances, and psychological thrillers, showcasing his amazing degree of versatility in the process. Ryan Gosling stars in Netflix's recently released The Gray Man, which earned the title of the streaming giant's largest production budget to date. But how is the Ken doll developing as a leading action hero given that the Russo brothers and Netflix cooperation is surprisingly flattering, followed by his journey to Action Man. The curse of the child acting star is a widely known phenomenon. Macaulay Culkin, Drew Barrymore, and Lindsay Lohan had it all, and their lapses into drug usage were largely a result of their early success. However, Ryan Gosling's shift from dancing and acting on Disney's Mickey Mouse Club to starring as the lead in The Believer was masterfully done, unlike his fellow troubled childhood prodigy. For the Ontarian, establishing his reputation in serious movies took time, but it was surely worthwhile. He put a lot of effort into his performances in Murder by Numbers and The Slaughter Rule before achieving the heights of popularity that his titular role in The Notebook earned him. Three years later, his performance in Ryan Fleck's Half Nelson caught the attention of Roger Ebert and the Los Angeles Times, who praised the actor's portrayal of a drug-addicted instructor and compared him to Marlon Brando. And then he made them an offer they couldn't refuse. Just kidding. With his convincingly surreal performance in the Nicholas Winding Refn film Drive, he revived his career as a tough guy real hero at the turn of the decade. While many aspiring big-budget action actors honed their craft in the more humble environments of indie films, the Canadian actor was honing his craft in films like Gangster Squad, The Place Beyond the Pines, and The Nice Guys. And while working with some of the best actors in the biz, including Josh Brolin, Sean Penn, Ray Liotta, and Russell Crowe. No pressure, Ryan. You're doing great. Then we add strings to his bow. The La La Land actor has gradually acquired a number of crucial qualities over the past 12 years that have allowed him to control his pursuit of action stardom. Gosling has been honing his craft while picking up small action skills in films that can't exactly be classified as action, but still have some great action sequences. Films such as The Nice Guys, where he plays a wholesome, confused P.I. with perfect comic timing, and Only God Forgives, where he plays the complex 
next emotionally vacant drug dealer, Julian. However, the actor has occasionally been criticized by people who think the actor might be overrated and doesn't possess the acting chops everyone claims that he has, and that several of his action flicks fall short in terms of character development and emotional arc. The stick that is often used to beat him has words like wooden, stiff, mumbling, cold, and uncharismatic engraved on it. But it's easy to argue that before the recent release of The Gray Man, he hadn't proven his capabilities in straight-up action. However, one movie may have better equipped him than any other, allowing his performance to avoid criticism occasionally thrown at it. Which brings us to the Blade Runner 2049 audition. The performances in high-budget blockbusters, where they may truly define their careers by delivering notable performances, could be the greatest measure for the true action greats. Even though Blade Runner 2049 isn't exactly an action movie per se, it undeniably has the most well-executed and extensive action sequences of Ryan Gosling's career up to that point. This was his first big-budget movie, an audition that helped assess the actor's skills as a real screen presence in an iconic action flick. In his portrayal of Officer K, Ryan Gosling portrays a delicate, pure aura of vulnerability. He brushes off criticism of his seeming lack of depth and builds this lovely character of a man who is incredibly complex. Well, not a man, more like a replicant, but anyway. But there is a lasting mismatch with his appearances in the movie's action sequences, particularly when he is involved in combat. There seems to be a lack of conviction in the shallow, forgettable aspect of his involvement in the combat scenes. Gosling constantly feels small by the size of his surroundings and the energy of his opponents, such as Dave Bautista, Harrison Ford, or Mackenzie Davis, although this is mainly due to the fact that he's portraying a replicant rather than a human. Yeah, those really weren't his memories. In conclusion, Ryan Gosling is the gray man. Even though the Russo Brothers film has received both positive reviews and harsh criticism, Ryan Gosling's performance did little to separate him from his existing poor reputation in action films. His character in the movie, another nameless character who we know as Sierra Six, is oddly similar to his emotionless performance in Drive. After uncovering highly secret CIA information, Sierra Six is being chased by his former employers after squaring off against the almost comically corrupt Lloyd Hansen, Chris Evans. Gosling's performance is cold, disconnected, and lacks charisma as the closest thing to a hero. But his character has a fantastic sense of humor, but it is only teased in a few lines in the movie. As for the overwhelming number of fight sequences in The Gray Man, he hardly breaks a sweat or cracks that serious look that is permanently written across his face. This is similar to how the action scenes in Blade Runner 2049 always seem to be without any real danger. And lastly, the jury's out. However, we have yet to see Ryan Gosling replicate or translate the undeniable acting qualities he was highly recognized for in his career and films like The Big Short and La La Land into action roles. A few of his action roles have undoubtedly been glimpses of absolute genius. Perhaps in his future projects such as a Gray Man sequel or a potential Ghost Rider film starring Ryan Gosling, the actor will showcase more of his true talents in high-profile action. Regardless, Many are thrilled that his next movie, Barbie, which is currently in development, may show us his comeback to what he does best. That's all for this video. What are your thoughts on The Gray Man? Do you think Ryan Gosling may become the greatest action movie star in the near future? Let us know your comments below. And remember, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content in the future. Thanks for watching. See you next time.